Hello and welcome to the Daily Milk from Wednesday the 12th of October 2022. Now, um, something has come up regarding Gary Rowett maybe leaving Millwall and joining West Bromwich Albion. And it's all stemmed from um, a journalist who used to be the head of media at West Bromwich Albion making some very interesting comments so literally a very interesting comment so this is from footballleagueworld.co.uk journalist shares details as championship managers reportedly very interested in quotes in West Brom managerial role um okay uh, Mill boss Gara is reportedly very interested in the current managerial vacancy at West Brom as explained by journalist Chris Lepofsky on the Liquidator podcast. Now, before we get on and read the rest, let's have a look at who this guy is. So here it is his Twitter lift, Chris Lepofsky. He's a course director of sports journalism, so he teaches journalism at Birmingham City University. Um, these 40 times, Prost International. Uh, British arm of Prost Soccer covering all sport on this side of the land. Never heard of him. Journo, author, ex WBA uh, media head, and then uh, Buzzaglo to Bulls. I think that's the book that he wrote, and he's got his own Twitter just for that book. Uh, Liquidator, that's the podcast. Uh, book free ongoing. So he writes, writes books. Uh, writes books, and. That's who's made some comments. So, worth remembering, this is his latest tweet, that just a flurry of bets can make a difference to managerial odds when there isn't much liquidity. What is he talking about there? Well, what he's talking about is the price after this guy said the things that he said and the story was on this podcast, which is this podcast, uh, The Liquidator, a greasy bonus. Is 22 minutes long, um, and around about the nine minute mark, he makes a, a comment about um, who could come in. He talks about Sean Dyche, how uh, that's probably not going to happen because it costs too much money, and uh, yeah. Um, then he discusses Carlos Corberan, who's available after leaving Olympiacos. Then he discusses Gary Rowett. And says he knows on good authority that Gary Rowe is very interested in the job. So not that West Brom and Jalvin are very interested in him. That Gary Rowe himself is very interested in the job. And then he speaks about the Millwall assistant manager, Paul Robinson. Not, not, uh, the grey-haired one who's just come in. Of course, played at West Brom and Jalvin, Um And says he's very interested in... Becoming a manager one day, so but it might be a bit early for him this job, or it clearly is. Um, but could it be a package? Could they get uh, Gary Rowett and Paul Robinson? We don't know, but yeah, so this is who this guy is. This is what he said. He said it on this uh, podcast, and that's been taken and it's gone out uh, in the football journalism. Uh, environment and he's responding to Gary Rowett uh, before all this was said was 22 to 1 he also said I'm not a betting man but if you are might be worth it what well, might be worth putting some money on so he said that in, in that podcast or something similar this is, he definitely said I'm not very bet I'm not a betting man but it is an interesting uh, thing, and he was twenty-two to one. And you can see Gary out now, now now short. It's three to one. Some bookmakers has have him as the favourite, as the favourite. Gary Rowe, the favourite to get this job at West Brom Jalvi, after what this guy said on the podcast. So it's kind of like inside information that's got out, and. Uh, a lot of people are figured well 
there's a short list and you carry out what's on it. There's like a three or four man short list we're told, we were told. And Gary Rout seems to be on it. Well, why would someone who's on a short list be 22 to 1? That's that's worth having a gamble because if you're on a three man short list, surely the odds should be, if everything's equal, which we know they're not, 3 to 1. So that's where he is now. He's, uh, he's literally the favourite of some bookmakers. Um, probably not ones you know. Uh, William Hill have him at eight. They have Sean Dyche as favourite for some reason. Sky Bet, though, do have him as favourite. Bet Victor has to have him as favourite. And some firm called Parry Match have, it, have, have him as favourite as well. So what is going on? Um, if we go back to the main uh, Football League world story, the Baggies are currently looking for Steve Bruce's successor. Following the club's decision to part company with Bourne and Manchester United man on Monday, a report from the Mirror on Monday claimed that Rao was one of the names under consideration at the Orphans, with this latest update suggesting that it is a job that the current Millwall boss is eager to hear more about. So we've got the Mirror saying he's on the shortlist, and we've got this guy who's former West Brom head of media. Saying he knows that Gary Rout is very interested in this job. Interesting stuff, huh? Um, so yeah, we've got some quotes. They've got some quotes here, but like I said, if you want to find it, if you want to listen to it yourself, it's this. This is on Spotify. It's called the Liquidator Brucey Bonus. It's on on a podcast, and like I said, um, the quote is: "You've got somebody like Gary Rout, who I am reliably informed." Is very interested in the job. By the quirks of football, we happen to be playing Millwall very soon. Indeed. I'm not here. This is the quote that he said. This is the quote he said. I'm not a betting man. I'm not saying that Rao would definitely get the job, but he might be one to watch in all of this because I'm fairly sure that he will be a strong candidate. Um, yeah, and then we got some. Stuff and so let's move on to one thing. I would say it's good that this uh, football league world they shared they put the links in. Uh, you can see here, so they've got the link there. You click on that, you go to it, opens uh, up the links and they tell you what they're reporting on, which is good. And you should also don't believe anything you see. Don't believe anything you read. Always go and look at what they're saying and double check it. Get as much information as you can. It's, it's all out there. It's all open. You can find it as well. Um, I opened up this podcast on Spotify, which they put the link into the story for. I listened to it. I had to skip around a bit. Around about the nine, eight to nine, eight to ten minute mark, where where we are now, about ten sixteen. Uh, go a bit forward, and that's where they start talking about. Um, Gower out, but if you want to listen to from from the start, they talk about how um, the training under Bruce was absolutely shocking. Uh, he signed a player who was mate with who was a mate of his uh, son. He signed a player who was his neighbour. Um, just weird, crazy shit like that. Like Steve Bruce seems to be a bit of a dark dinosaur in the modern age of football, and it's uh, incredible that he keeps getting jobs, but. What can you do? Maybe this is the final round in the coffin, but we will see. Um, so let's move on to the mirror story, where this is all uh, originated from. Uh, West Brom draw up three-man shortlist to replace Steve Bruce, which Sean Dyche left off. Uh, West Brom sacked Steve Bruce after a horror spell in the baggies where he won, um, where he only won eight matches on Monday. With four, he only won eight matches. Well, he only won one of eight matches, I think. He hasn't won eight matches, otherwise he would be top of the table. What, what is this? What is this uh, right in here? Um, with Carlos Corver and the early front runner, so West Brom are drawing up the shortlist of Stacking Sacking Steve Bruce and Carlos Corver and set the talks. Uh, Halbion are set to speak to several candidates who run a full recruitment process after axing Bruce with the baggies in Championship relegation zone. 
former Newcastle manager Bruce won just eight of his 32 games in charge of the Orphans after arriving in February. So he's won eight matches in 32 games from starting from last season. Uh, now Orphans CEO Ron Gourlay is assembling a list of options to speak to, but Sean Dyche is holding out for a Premier League job. Names in the frame include former Huddersfield Town coach uh, Corboran, who left his who left this summer after guiding the Terriers to last time's playoff final against the odds. He subsequently uh, lasted just 11 games at Olympiacos before being replaced last month and is available. Millwall boss Gary Rat has also of interest as he is used to operating on a modest, modest budget in London, which appeals to the Baggies' Chinese owners. A former Albion, Albion target Chris Wilder is expected to be spoken to as well. David Wagner pursued by the club in June 2021 is unavailable due to his terms of exit from young boys. Uh, West Brom are winless in their last eight league games with the final shot for Bruce coming as they were held to a 0-0 draw at home to Luton. Albion are back in action uh, with a trip to Reading on Saturday. Um, shall we look at the comments? Is it worth it? Um, no. Uh, no. Someone's saying Duncan Ferguson. Duncan Ferguson? Darren Ferguson. Um, yeah, nothing worth noting then. So, like we've seen, let's go back to the odds. You can see I've shown you Gary Rout is the favourite of some bookmakers. Um, he is the fourth favourite with William Hill. Maybe they know, they know something uh, we don't. Sean Dyche favourite there. Uh, that is weird. Unibet. Gary Rout's not even available on Unibet. Maybe he is, but the prices aren't showing up here. Gary Rout's not even available on Bet UK. So who knows what's going on? But if we scroll down and have a look, some most popular bets. Apparently, I don't know where this is from, where they get their bet from. Maybe this is people who come to this website and click on the links and go through and then place a bet. I don't know, but it says so. Only eight, eight is eight, um, eight percent of bets bet on Gary Rowe in purple. Eight percent, so eight percent of the number of bets. So if a hundred people have had a bet, uh, eight of them vote, uh, bet on Gary Rowe, or is it the money, the total money? Um, but the favourite does seem to be Sean Dice. So that's where the money is, as you can see up above. Why is Sean Dice not the favourite? There's several. Uh, bookmakers then, because the money would shorten it, no? But you you'd think the Skybet knows something then, because why would Sean Dyche not be the short price because of the money that's been on him? They know he's not interested, and then they probably won't uh, shorten the price. But that's um uh, fifteen. Oh, okay, okay. Um, does that make sense? I don't know. Thirty-nine percent bets, but then it's got number five there. I don't know. This is weird. Um, but the color of Sean Dyche, it says five bets to it, but then it says thirty-nine percent bets. Um, Carlos Corbran, fifteen percent. Liam Richardson didn't even know who that was. That's a Currently, the Wigan boss, 9%. Chris Wilder and Gary Rout, 8% of bets. Um, so, apparently, Gary Rout is very interested in this job. Um, what doesn't surprise me because we have been very mean to him. Um, playing, he, he loves the 3 5 2, and we kind of bull all bullied him into changing to a 4 2 3. Um, but may have come at the right time for Gary Rout, changing to that. Um, because we have a game, Bristol City, which is being shown around the world, apparently, on television. If we keep the 4 2 3 in that one, we then have a game midweek against Watford, which is on Sky Sports. We play 4 2 3 1 in that, play well in attacking football. So you've got two occasions now where Gary Rowett can prove to the world he can take the stink off his name. Where he's got the reputation of being a shit boring um attritional football manager. And it's because of us, because we bullied him into changing formation. 
and he has, and we're playing better. We're, we're uh, playing better and playing more attacking football and getting winning results. And he can now showcase that to the world in the next two games and might help him get this job if he really wants it. Um, and then after that Watford game, three days later, we have West Brom. So if he is on the move, when will it happen? Um, after Bristol City game, after the Watford game, will they will they wait until after the the uh, West Brom Javian? Now we do have links with West Brom Javian because one of our former players is playing there more, quite recently, uh, Mr. Jed Wallace. So I'm pretty sure Millwall will not want Gary Rout to go to West Brom Javian and then come back and manage West Brom Javian against Millwall at the Den. On Saturday, the 22nd of October, I'm pretty sure they will not want that to happen. So maybe if it does progress to that point, then how can you keep it secret in this day and age? Um, maybe they'll let him go, but under the proviso that he doesn't manage the team at uh, at that game, but then. What can you what can you do about that? I, I guess you ban him from the stadium. Um, well, is it part of the compensation package? You say, well, um, pay us this much, but then, but if they're paying for t for him to become their manager, and then they say, well, yeah, no, we want him to manage straight away. But um, who knows what's going going to happen? Who knows how quickly it will go through? Um, now you would in the back in back in the day you would uh, hear about meetings in hotels and um, managers missing training to go to go to meetings and such. Um, now in this day and age we've all got Zoom meetings and Skype and shit like that. Um, so there's no reason why um, all of this couldn't be done behind closed doors on the internet. And we would never know about it because we wouldn't we wouldn't have the pictures of um, them meeting on, in a hotel uh, in uh, West Bromwich. So we literally have no idea until it happens, and um, we have to rely on insiders like Chris Lebowski, um to tell us what's going on. But as at the moment, Gary Rat is the favourite with some of the bookmakers. Uh, we have a journalist from. West Bromwich Albion side saying that he knows Gary Rout is very interested in the job. Uh, we know that he has made a big deal about um, being away from home, being away from the Midlands. Um, he's managed most of his career in the Midlands at Burton, Derby, um, uh, where at Birmingham, Stoke. So where else can he go? Um, Leicester uh, not enough for us seem to be off the table for him although they'll probably get relegated uh, this season um, well, not enough for us will probably be off the table anyway because he was at Derby County um, Aston Villa definitely off the table for him so who else is left Lincoln Knox County Walsall um, Cambridge MK Dons for the level that he wants to be at if it's a championship and above West Bromwich Albion is the place to go. So there you go. Um, but at the moment, Gary is still the Mill manager, and he's still talking to this guy who keeps calling him up from the Southwark News and giving him little things for stories. So here we go. Um, this is from SouthwarkNews.co.uk. Gary Rout backs Mill forward to continue goal scoring. Well, I'm sure uh, playing in a 4 2 3 1, uh, he definitely will. Uh, Zion Fleming has been named in the Air Force Team of the Week twice since the start of October. Uh, Gary Rout believes that Zion Fleming is capable of continuing his impressive form. His teammates can continue creating chances. The Dutch man has scored four goals in his last four league games, making him Mill's top scorer going into Saturday's game against Bristol City. Rout is confident that he can continue his fine goal scoring run in the coming weeks and months, especially in the Lions New Look formation, but that he needs the service from the players around him in order to make it happen. I think he's capable of doing that, the mill boss told me then. From our perspective, we've got to get him into those positions like all of the forward line. 
we got to try and service the forward line and give them solid base for them to go and be diff difference in attack. But I think that's been a huge part of the last two games. I think the formation will probably help Zion a little bit because he's a natural number 10. And having one striker in front of him and two wide players leaves and drags people out into areas where he potentially has a little bit more space to exploit. Uh, they're all factors, I think, against Blackpool. We had something like 8 out of 10 shots. Uh, you can see that he's also been incredibly proactive in trying to have attempts on goal and be dangerous, even in games where he hasn't scored. He's a very, very good player, and his form should inspire, help the other players around him, be confident. Long may it continue, but it's a championship, and we've got to keep working incredibly hard to maintain those goals for Zion. Uh, indeed, if you look on whoscored.com and go to player ratings for the whole of the championship and you sort it by shots per game, shots per 90 minutes, uh, who's top of that table in the whole of the league? Who's had the most shots in the league? Zion Fleming. He's had the most uh, shots per game. And number two is another Dutchman, Joel Perot from Swansea. So there you go. Uh, moving on now to this also from Gary Rao. Millwall boss clarifies Andreas Vogel Sammer's best position. Uh, many supporters are keen to see the German attacker playing up front. Gary Rao has refused to rule out playing Andreas Vogel Sammer the striker as he continues to search for his first goal in English football. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people are. Benekophobe, he's not had the best start of the season. I don't know what's happened. Bradshaw, he's missed some glorious chances. Um, now you think he, he needs to get his eye in, but I mean, mate, we need you to score some goals. When you have four decent chances and you don't score, um, it's not ideal. So a lot of people are suggesting put Vogel Samra up front and then you can have someone else on the right there, maybe Shackleton, someone like that, I don't know. Uh, the German has played nine championship games so far this season, usually starting on the left or the right flank. In Mill's new 4-2-3-1 formation, he has been used as a right winger, with Rowan praising his performance against Middlesbrough as his best since joining the club from Union Berlin in August. Many supporters are keen to see the 30-year-old played as a central striker. However, with Tom Bradshaw yet to find a back in it this season, and Benny Kofobi struggling to nail down a place in the starting lineup, many of Vogel Sammer's teammates have also highlighted his incredible Finishing and training indicating that his best position could be through the middle. Rowett's claimed that he considered playing him in that position this week, but he's versatile enough to be able to play in a wide position as well. For me, his best position is either as a central striker or a narrower wide player. That's where I see him, the mill boss told me that then. At Bielefeld, he played a lot more on the left, cutting the right foot and getting into those finishing positions. But obviously, the likes of Tyler and Benno also prefer that side. But he is, when you see him in training, he's got an unbelievable strike. He's an unbelievable free kick taker. I think at the moment Zion has pinched most of those opportunities. But though he's a brilliant dead ball taker. You take the Norwich strike that is the bar and you take that strike that the keeper carries for Brad a shot on Saturday. You have to have brilliant techniques to be able to do that. He hits the ball hard and it moves a lot. Whilst he's shown he's a brilliant team player, he will also show his technical ability in front of goal. It's probably a little bit more difficult for him to do that on the right at times. I've considered him everywhere, I've considered him in every one of those roles. But we've got lots of good players at the moment. With the new formation uh, being two games old, players are sort of feeling in their way into where they fit in. Some are more natural, some of that obviously been recruited for a 5-2-3, 5-2-1-2 five, or 5-3-2. So of course, uh, there'll be one or two that will need to find a new position to a certain degree. That'll be fine, we've got good players and I don't see that being an issue. So there you go. Um, moving on now to this. Um, if you wanted to buy a Bristol City ticket and you were quite alarmed that you missed out um, because they were sold out, well, we have been given 334 more tickets. And this was published at lunchtime on Mill FC's Twitter. And they have not put out a statement saying that they have sold out yet. And on the online store, there are still they're still selling them, so there must be some available. So if you want to go to Bristol City on Saturday because we've changed formation and we're actually playing football that you want to watch and you want to see and you want to uh, you, you want to travel the country to watch to play it, 
uh, there are more Bristol City tickets available for you by now. And um, we're going to finish today's video with this. Uh, I've got a little reminder here. Rugby for Heroes. Uh, there was a charity match at Den during the uh, minuscule uh, World Cup break. Um, the Battle of the Balls takes place at the Den on Friday, the 11th of November. The world of rugby, consisting of ex and current rugby icons, take on the world of football. A team featuring celebrities and well known faces within the footballing world in a 90 minute charity football match. The sides will be managed by iconic football managers. Harry Redknapp and Mick McCarthy. The game will kick off at 7.45 on a special occasion for the nation. As we pay thanks to those who sacrificed their lives for the freedom of others, there will be military personnel past and present in attendance, as well as a pre-match remembrance tribute. Uh, both teams will also be wearing a poppy on the kits. And there you go, charity football match. Buy tickets now on Mill's website. Uh, is the last game in SC16. For the 2022 FIFA World Cup tickets are on sale now plus the 10 band and Ox 5 pound under 16s and just one pound for under 12s. And like I said, you can buy the tickets from your website, Rugby for Heroes. Um, they raise funds and awareness for military personnel who are making the transition to civilian life. Uh, Rugby for Heroes are committed to providing financial and personal support to help individuals overcome many challenges that this transition presents. And you can find out more about them by clicking on this link. Which is rugbyforheroes.org.uk. So there you go. Um, something. Charity football match at the den. Um, don't know about you, but I love it when these these events come to me, all these kind of events. Uh, the international games that we've had at the den featuring uh, Sierra Leone and others. Um, having these kind of events at the den, it's, uh, I really do like it. Um, I think we need to support things like this, and the more of them will come. And uh, hopefully, hopefully they they get some good numbers. And on that note, thank you for watching. And goodbye.